1989, I was a graduate student in the School of Social Work at Rutgers University, and I desperately needed a graduate assistantship. So a friend of mine referred me to a man by the name of George Brelsford. He was the Director of Residence Life at Glassboro State College in New Jersey. I wouldn't call George a teacher per se, but uh, he certainly was and has been a mentor for my entire career. When I met with George, uh, we talked a little about possibilities, and much to my own surprise, uh, he offered me a graduate hall director position. Uh, essentially what that meant was that I would be in a residence hall counselor, I'd have an apartment on campus, I'd get a meal plan, and I'd get a stipend. As far as I was concerned, that was terrific because I was getting out of my parents' basement. Um, at the same time, I had been a high school teacher. And so the plan was, after I finished my master's degree, I would go back to the high school that I was working at and I would be a guidance counselor. Well, about six months into this position or this graduate assistantship that George had provided me, he, he, he called me into his office and he said, um, I think you should consider doing this full time. And I was actually shocked by that. I, I was like, so I can be a residence hall director full time? Like this is a job where people will actually pay me like real money and I'll get benefits and stuff? Um, and he said, yeah, I think you should go for it. And so he introduced me to the field of higher ed, the field of student affairs, chronicle of higher education and all of that. And he helped me put together some resumes and some cover letters and I sent them out and I had four interviews for an entry level residence life position and it was pretty great. And one day I received three letters. That's when we used to have like mailboxes and you got things on paper. Um, <laughs> so I got these three letters and they were all rejection letters from three of the four places that I had interviewed. I was devastated, I was beside myself. And so I took these letters and I run to George's office and I look at George and I'm, I'm in tears and I say, you told me that I would get a job in higher ed, that I should do this and um, I gave up my teaching job for this and I, I can't believe it, now what am I gonna do? <clears throat> He looked at me, he took those letters, he put them in a file folder, and he took out a black Sharpie, and he wrote across the file folder, stupid file. And he said to me, and he handed it back to me, and he said to me, those are the people who are stupid enough not to hire you. <laughs> and I was stunned. He goes, trust me, you will be successful in higher education. Uh, that file, by the way, is about this thick now, <laughs> filled with rejection letters, um, actually a couple from Southern Connecticut State University where I'm president from years ago. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is that um, George taught me to persevere. Uh, George has helped, helped me to, to have confidence, um, and, and George essentially um, set the path for me to become a higher education professional and I didn't even know he was doing it at the time. And so George has since attended both of my inaugurations as a college president and regardless of my position, I look back on him as a teacher, a mentor, and a friend to this day.